the Tie Cats Audio Network. This is Tie Cats Today with Louis Butko. Yes, it is Tie Cats Today for a Wednesday, July the 20th, 2022 travel day for the Hamilton Tiger Cats as they are en route to British Columbia to take on the Lions. 10 o'clock kickoff tomorrow, 9 o'clock pregame right here on the Ticats Audio Network. Louis Butko here with you, getting you set for that game. And uh, no practice today, as I mentioned, the team traveling. So uh, no post-practice sound to get to. We will be joined in just a few minutes by the CFL on TSN's Glenn Suter. Lots to get into uh, with Suits. He's fresh off a plane ride from ocean to ocean, basically, from uh, Atlantic Canada to uh, Pacific uh, northwest there up in uh, BC. So uh, we'll talk to Suits coming up. Uh, as mentioned, lots to get into with him. Uh, but right now, let's check the uh, Tie Cats depth chart as I uh, hold in my hand how the Tie Cats are expected to line up against the BC Lions in tomorrow night's game. And let's start up front on the offensive line. Uh, no changes from last week as it is uh, Colin Kelly at left tackle, Brandon Revenberg at left guard, Alex Fontana, the starting center, Coulter Woodmansey. At uh, right guard, Chris Van Zyl at right tackle. Dane Evans is quarterback number one. No change there. Just one small change at the quarterback position as uh, the number three quarterback has changed from Jamie Newman. Jalen Morton now dressing for this one. At the receiver group, Stephen Dunbar Jr., Tyler Ternowski out wide. You got Tim White, Braylon Addison at slot and making his season debut, Emmanuel Butler in place of Anthony Johnson, who was placed on the six-game injured list. Uh, he's dealing with a hand injury. Uh, that's uh, the offense. Let's switch defense. Uh, no changes up front as it's uh, Mason Bennett, Micah Johnson, Dylan Wynn, and Julian Hauser on the D-line. Kyle Wilson making his second straight start at weak side linebacker in place of Simone Lawrence, Joe Van Santos Knox, and Cam Kelly at their regular spots. And in the secondary, no changes. As from left to right, it's Jamal Roll, uh, Alden Darby, the Alden Darby Jr., excuse me, uh, Tunde, a delegate at free safety, Richard Leonard, and Siante Evans uh, rounding up the secondary. Des Lawrence expected to make his season debut. He's backing up Jamal Roll at the corner boundary. And on special teams, Seth Small gets a second straight start handling the field goal duties. Mike Domagala will handle kickoffs and punting. Gordon White's the long snapper. And no surprise here, heard him this week, Lawrence Woods the third will handle the kick return and punt return duties. Uh, the injured list, taking a quick look, John Ryan, Nick Cross, Mohamed Diallo, and Lee Autry the second, all on the one-game injured list. Lamar Durant, Pappy White, Simone Lawrence, Cariel Brooks, Kyle Saxlett, and Anthony Johnson, all on the six-game injured list. Although, I get the sense that uh, one of those players will be coming off the six-game injured list relatively soon. Maybe one that has been on there for six games, but uh, we'll keep our eye on that heading into next week's game against Montreal. Of course, we got to get through this first game against the BC Lions to tomorrow night. And the man on the call uh, is the CFL on TSN's Glenn Suter. And uh, very pleased to have Suits on the show now, who is fresh off a, uh, a transatlantic flight uh, from... Halifax, Nova Scotia to uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. That's about as uh, coast to coast as you can get in this country. And uh, suits, uh, it looked great on television, but uh, it looked like a special, special time in Atlantic Canada this past weekend. Yeah, you're right. I mean, first of all, uh, the best kept secret in our country. This is a beautiful, beautiful part of our country. I strongly recommend that the next time we do this, and let's hope it's next year, uh, another game uh, building towards a franchise, the 10th franchise in that region, but um, just outstanding. You know, I mean, uh, the hospitality from all the people of Halifax and Wolfville, fantastic. Katie University, um, the kids and the, and the uh, college age uh, football fans that were going crazy. I mean, uh, that was tailgating. I mean, that was U.S. style tailgating, college, U.S. college style tailgating which, you know, it could be their thing if they get that franchise. Or I'm going to say when. Uh, I know there's lots of narratives out there, Louis, about, you know, the, the commissioner has overpromised by guaranteeing it or whatever he did. I, I got a chance while I was out there to talk to some influential people in the, in the city. I mean, not, not government officials. I think government officials are right now, you know, being cautious about how much they talk about it. 
uh, because it's I think it's a really polarizing discussion right now in that region. At least that's what it sounds like. But I'm talking about business people, people with a lot of money in the area, got a chance to go to a reception uh, held by the Canadian, uh, the Royal Canadian Navy uh, on one of their new ships and uh, got a chance to meet some real influential people in the, in the city. And they are actively working towards a solution here. Uh, they all believe that this can happen and that the, the region will support a 10th franchise, a CFL franchise. It'll become the biggest game in town. I mean, it really will. And they all believe it. It's a matter of how they work this stadium and how they get it done and where they put it. But they are actively working on it. So I, I'm not going to say, you know, I've, I've said I'm optimistic we'll see it. I, I'm a half full guy anyway. But, um, you know, there's a long way to go. Let's hope we do it every year just to build up to it. And, and Louis, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a half full guy and believe that one day it'll happen. Is there something to be said, though, about that neutral site game? Because the NFL has clearly had a lot of success with it. We've seen them expand and even try to reach into Canada on that point. But is there something to be said about the, the game day experience? And you mentioned it there, the college age kids. Is there, could you see it working in somewhere other than Atlantic Canada? Because what I took away from it was it was an event. And it brought yeah. football fans it didn't matter. And I'm sure you see all the same thing. It wasn't just riders jerseys and Argos jerseys. It was a destination, casual fans, just like they would for the Grey Cup made the trip. And I think they would in other cities too. Is there something to be said about neutral site games, maybe expanding beyond just Atlantic Canada? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and I, I think when you, uh, there was a sort of a Grey Cup celebration festival that was up from the pier uh, just sort of in the middle of downtown Halifax that the CFL had put together. And that had a whole bunch of people join it. I know there's all kinds of opinions that, you know, the four people I talked to didn't know why they were there. And, you know, you're going to hear all kinds of opinions, depending on, again, if you're half empty or half full. But, uh, you know, it was, it was jam-packed on the weekend. And there were a lot of people that were in there just interested to have a good time and enjoy the party. And, and certainly in Wolfville, on game day, that was the atmosphere. So I, I think you're bang on. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know if the league is, is actively pursuing it at this point, but they, you know, I'm hearing just sort of whispers behind scenes that that is a discussion that, you know, why not Quebec city for one game, a neutral site game? Why, why not Victoria and Vancouver Island for a neutral site game? You know, maybe even Saskatoon, for uh, you know one neutral site game just to shift it you're still going to get the same rider crazy but you'll get it you know two hours the other way instead of down in Regina so uh, I think it's a great idea move move our game across this country and you know maybe even up north if it's possible so I yeah absolutely I, I mean I even it, it, it might sound crazy to say but I think of like a neutral site if you build an atmosphere at like Queens, there's so many great youth sports stadiums that can be converted like we saw. And, you know, how, who wouldn't love it? An Ottawa Red Blacks, Toronto Argonauts game played halfway in the middle at Queens University in Kingston type thing. So I, I, that's the one thing I thought of where it's just like, it seems like because, because we know CFL fans travel so well to yeah. go to these events and i don't want to downplay just how how you know we we don't want to water down these events but anyway i just wanted to get your opinion on that because that's what i thought of there but let's talk about it. let's love talk it. about yeah. the bc lions because uh are we putting too much pressure on on nathan work are we building him up too much or is he legit can he handle the the things we're talking about yeah there's there i i have not found one thing that i like about him right now <laughs> i honestly um you know, on and off the field, how he's he's um, handling himself professionally after the loss, you know, their first loss of the season against the Bombers, seeing things that he's never seen, like Jackson Jeffcoat at six foot six, 280 pounds, dropping into coverage and intercepting a pass. I mean, he, he's not, he's not uh, played against athletes like that his whole life, and now he is, and it's, a, and it's an adjustment, as Dane would tell you, and all the quarterbacks that have come up. So, I don't think it is too much, though. Really, I we we are such a a humble country. You know, we're we're made up of a whole bunch of citizens. I I remember when John Tory said, if if Canada was voted the number one country in the world, Canadians would ask for a recount. You know, it's like let's let's 
embraced it. Let's let's put some pressure on him too. I mean, there, the pressure that he's going to feel in game, win and lose, up and down, is is going to you know be the most intense pressure he'll face. Not what the fans say, not what you and I say. So you know, I I think we talk about him. I I don't think it's too much. I you know after the game when they lost, I was listening to him in post game radio, and he he basically guaranteed and promised the uh the fan base that he was going to be the first guy in the office the next day he he didn't you know guarantee any wins or anything like that he's he's being very professional but he said he said i didn't play well enough i i didn't i didn't recognize some things on defense i've got a lot of work to do i'm going to be the first guy in the office and i guarantee you the fan that i will be better next time out i just i was like i love it i love this kid he's doing a great job he's working he can make all the throws probably see him run more as as the season goes on i think he'll he may even lead the league probably this is a prediction that he'll lead the lead the league in rushing at the quarterback position so hmm. I, I don't think it's too much louis i really don't well and coming off the bye week the bc lions you mentioned it a tough loss going into the bye week how how worried should the tie cats be uh, about just how motivated this lions team is to get back on track uh, tomorrow night well i i love this matchup because not only that Hamilton won, but the way they won. Mm. Um, I, I, I think that's going to go a long way to validate their process. So, you know, Coach O has been just like he's done in the last two years where they've been in the, in the championship game, had a team that was good enough to get in the championship game. Now they got to take one more step when they get there. But, um, yeah, you know, they, they have this system in place, the culture in place to win. So, you know, the, the start that they've had to the season is all of a sudden dropping self-doubt into the minds of coaches, players, administration, all of it. This is just what happens in sports. But then you win, and you win the same way you've you've been losing almost. You, you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Like, yeah. they still turn the ball over deep down into the fourth quarter. They had a chance to you know, to, to really take a commanding lead with seven minutes to go. And they threw a pick on their, on Ottawa's goal line. I mean, it was almost the script that had been written all season long, but this time they found a way to get it done. And some will say, well, it was a missed field goal. That's just lucky. No, no, no. It was exactly the same script they've been going through, but this time they validated with the win. Now they can build on a win. And that's a very different week work week. Yeah, uh, Dane said that earlier this week. He said, you know, coaching off a win a whole lot easier than coaching off a loss. And and we've heard it from Orlando time and time again. The, the point of the game is to have more points than the other team exactly. when the final whistle goes. And if you can do that, nobody cares uh, about how, how much you beat him. Uh, speaking of Dane, did you learn anything about him? I know we've been watching him for a long time. You know him well, but did you learn anything about him in that last game? Because there was that time it looked like maybe Matthew Schultz was going to get the chance to lead, and that led to that goal line interception, like you said. But did you take away anything from uh, number nine's performance or the way he handled himself in that game? Yeah, the way he handled himself more than anything. I I, I think about the, the turnover on downs deep into Ottawa territory and how he went to the sideline saying, don't worry about that. Let's, let's keep going. I mean, he is, he is fighting um, the, the, the real low uh, in his career early in this season. And I mean, low in that too many turnovers, you know, forgetting the fundamentals and key moments, like, like covering up both ends of the football. I mean, it's, it's a real simple fundamental that he knows and I'm sure he's working on in practice and then in a game in short yardage or when he's getting sacked he just forgets to secure it with both hands and make sure he's covering that ball up those are small fundamentals that he's been fighting for a while and so I, I saw not only that but the win has got to take a whole bunch of weight off his shoulders and just now you can really relax you got that one under your belt now move in and now now you get a chance to beat a very, very good team with a hot young quarterback, go on the road. It's a long trip. You've got all the excuses not to win. This is the time you can really make a statement that we are back. We were validated. And now we're going to go and, you know, take, take on the Lions.
I, I wasn't lying when I said there's lots to get to, because even in a short week with the tie cats, uh, they, they managed to steal the headlines. Kahari Jones brought in as a, uh, a football operations consultant, uh, your thoughts on, on that move uh, and, and what do you think it means for this Thai Cats team specifically on offense where we know Kahari Jones has uh, been so successful as a coordinator and a head coach in this league? Yeah, I, I, I love it when either the head coach is a, I mean, you can be a, gr- a great head coach like Coach O and, and not be a former quarterback. I mean, that we've seen it many, many times. I mean, Don Matthews and Wally Buono and on and on. But if you have a guy in your staff that has played the position, if you have guys that you know can help you coordinate the offense that have been on the field, like a former quarterback like Kahari, you, you know that sounding board for the for the starter and for the backup for the for the quarterback room is is super important. You know, it's it's almost like a buffer sometimes mm-hmm. between a defensive minded head coach who's kind of saying, you know, protect the ball. And now you got a quarterback said, Hey, I know what, what you're going through. Let's work on these spe- specific drills that can help you or, or work on this film study that I would do when I was having issues with this part of the game. You know what I mean? Like it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, um, it's a really nice buffer to have that former quarterback be able to sit in the quarterback room and, and consult. I, I really think it's a, a huge, a, a great move for the, for the tie cats. They got to be careful because they're at their limit <laughs> when it comes to coaches, not coaches cap, I don't think, but, but uh, coach numbers. So uh, it's an interesting title that he was given. I, I was about to say, I, I, I'm very careful in saying that he is not a, a coach on this team. He is a football operations consultant, uh, right. which is the title that uh, was announced. But obviously, uh, Owen mentioned it, that he's going to be leaning on him a lot. And uh, and even Dane mentioned it this week about how, you know, Matthew Schiltz had a lot of good year or good years as backup. And there's kind of a translator there for, uh, for Dane as well. Uh, the receiver, Stephen Dunbar Jr. Made a great catch. Uh, again, this oh. receivers oh. group of the tie cats. Uh, I'll get your thoughts on Dunbar, but just really they had Anthony Johnson come in and other than the fumble made a couple of great plays, including that touchdown, Tim white with another touchdown, uh, Braylon in double coverage. I mean, this tie cats receiving group, if that, if him and D- if they and Dane can get on the same page, I mean, that, that should be scary for uh, opposition defenses. Well, th- that's what I mean about the way they won. I mean, it was sort of a similar script, but they win the game. And then they sit there in the, in the locker room and they go, look at all the talent we've got in this room. I mean, now we get that sort of demon out of our head that we're the self-doubt demon. That's what I call him. He is, he's bad, man. And we all have it. Uh, fighting self-doubt in our lives, my goodness. But, you know, when you look in the locker room and, and he has through the losses too, and he's going, this is why it's so frustrating because they see all the great talent in this room and we should be winning games. So, mm. you know, to validate it first, have some of the great catches that, that Dunbar, I mean, I've been saying throughout the season, and I'm using this these this sort of phrase intentionally, that we're we're watching and enjoying the athleticism of world class athletes. It's it's really is as simple as that. And you start taking a look at some of these these plays. I mean, how about Addison's catch on the outside on that curl and the deep curl that was thrown like a bullet outside of him, and he he you know snags it out of the air. Dunbar's catch. Um, Anthony Johnson, you know, he he looked good. I mean, so I I just I think about world class athletes. The game is continually coming through and proving that it is entertaining as any sport on the planet. I mean, one possession games all last week, right down to the wire. That's what this league is. And the final three minutes of the half, final three minutes of the game. Most exciting, you know, I've said it before, Louis, I'm going to keep saying it because it's the most exciting three minutes in all of sports, in, in any sport. So let's just celebrate it. Let's, yeah. let's, let's end the narrative. Let's, when you see that Dunbar catch, yeah. let's, let's end the narrative that our game needs fixing. Our game does not need fixing. We can always tweak rules. I still want to tweak rules. In fact, I'm still not sure what hitting the quarterback late is anymore. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure yeah. out the roughing the passer call after the 
maritime uh, deal. Well, I mean, can you can you be a passer if you're past the line of scrimmage and you're throwing it illegally? Exactly, uh, exactly, uh... <laughs> exactly. Well, that uh, one, and also I thought hitting a, a quarterback below the knees yeah. was illegal, even if you crawled to him mm. and hit him below the knees. So this is not looking through colored jerseys here, colored goggles. <laughs> this is just watching hits and going, wait a minute, that was below the knees. He could have avoided it and no penalty and not overturned in review. Okay, now I'm I'm yeah. I'm back to wondering what this <laughs> Well, you mentioned celebrating the game, and I posed that question to uh to Dylan this week, uh Dylan Wynn, and I said, Listen, all games decided on the last play this week, and he without without hesitation, you know, backing up the CFL, calling it the most entertaining brand of football. And we got a guy like that who's played through the system, who's played college ball, played all throughout high school. Uh, I think that's just about as uh, as good of a a recommendation for this league as you can get. Yeah, Doug Flutie says it. Warren Moon says it. Anybody that you know played major college football, a lot of a lot of guys that have played in both leagues. You know, they, they come up here and they go, this is unbelievable. I mean, remember when Mark Tressman, I remember having meeting after meeting with Mark Tressman and on all in all of them in the first two years that he was here, he goes, man, this final three minutes of the game is like nothing I've ever managed at any level in coaching football. He said, it is so exciting and so tricky. You have to be a thinking man's coach here to figure out how to manage the final three minutes and the decisions that you have to make and the plays and the changes of possession that can happen and the big returns because we actually have a return game in the Canadian Football League. So, you know, you you add all those up and yeah, I, I hear you, Dylan. And let's just keep let's just keep saying it because it's not fake news. It's real. It's absolutely real. Somehow along the way, we've, uh, you know, a lot of people forgot to remind fans of that. And, and really focused on the half empty part of things, but world-class athletes, most exciting game on the planet. We started the conversation glass half full talking touchdown Atlantic. We're going to finish the uh, conversation glass half full, just talking about what an exciting game that we get to cover. We get paid to do and uh, suits. This is the first time I've had you on uh, since the recent announcement. I am uh, so happy for you and congratulations on your induction in the Canadian football hall of fame. Uh, the reporters wing. I, I, I'm sure, you know, I spend a lot of time on the seventh floor at Tim Hortons mm -hmm. field and uh, excited to get to see your name. Uh, etched up there and your portrait up there so congratulations suits well deserved thank you Louis. you know i i honestly get a chance uh with this induction to um to represent every single crew member that has worked on the canadian football league as, as you know our tsn behind the scenes people our producers directors engineers people working the cameras all of those people there's probably between 30 and 50 crew members at every single game that are not just doing a gig. They have passion for Canadian football. They want to do it right. They're working hard to eliminate all the mistakes that we make all the time. But, you know, these guys will never get a chance and, and I get a chance to represent them. And that's that's really what, to me, this, this is mostly about. It's a team induction and I get to represent and, uh, you know, and thank the crew members for their passion. Well, it's, it's overdue, and uh, to get to do it in Saskatchewan, I'm sure, is a little extra special uh, for you, Suits. Uh, thanks for doing this. Uh, appreciate it, as always. Okay. Thanks, Louis. My thanks to Glenn Suter for joining me today, and my thanks to you as well, as we could not do the show without your support. Tomorrow is game day, so we won't have this show, uh, but you'll be able to catch a brand new episode of Tie Cats Game Day with Courtney Steven and Mike Daly. And, of course, that all leads into Tie Cats... Pre-game, Bubba O'Neill, Andy Fantuz have the call starting at 9 o'clock. They'll hand it off to RJ and Luke for the call and descriptions of the games at 10 p.m. I'll be back on Friday right here on the Ticats Audio Network. And you can check out a brand new episode of Speaking with the Enemy. Just dropped. You can check out a brand new episode of Ticats this week as well. Uh, everything you need right here on the Ticats Audio Network. I'm Louis Butko. Hoping you have a great day. Go Cats!
Tycast today can be heard every weekday, and we would like to hear from you. Email us at gameday at tiecats.ca. Have a question or an opinion? We want to hear it. That's gameday at tiecats.ca. Subscribe to the Tiecats Audio Network on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.